On today's episode of the Locked On Sabres podcast, a trade idea that I think you're going to hate, but I'm going to try to convince you. Coming up here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And... Thanks for making Locked On Sabres your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We are between games. The Sabres fall to Dallas on Tuesday night. They are next in action Saturday afternoon against the St. Louis Blues. So that means that we have some time in the middle for some more trade discussion as we are now exactly one month away from the NHL trade deadline that will happen on March 8th. Kind of interesting, by the way, the NHL trade deadline, I did not realize this, and I don't know that this, maybe this has changed in recent years, is so much later than the NBA trade deadline. The NBA trade deadline is today. And their season begins after the NHL season does. So those teams are 50 games in to their regular season. And boom, there's the trade deadline. Meanwhile, these NHL teams are also about 50 games in. They have another month to go before they get to their trade deadline. I don't know that that has to change or mean anything. Just a little interesting that the two leagues do it very, very differently. Sabres lines, by the way, exact same at practice. Um, nothing really to get into on that front before Saturday's game against St. Louis. There's not a lot interesting happening with lineup stuff, um, given where they are in the standings and the fact that we're not really seeing any major changes to the lineup. Oposo still on that top line, though, uh, which is not something that I necessarily like to see. So, uh, Again, if you want to check out our text line, go to joinsubtext.com slash locked on sabers. Become a sortie today. You sign up on the site, and that's it for the site. Everything else is through your phone, texting back and forth. Uh, would love to, in, to go back and forth with you. So if you want to jump into our text line, that's where you can do that. So we're between games, trade talk. Before we get to my trade idea that I'm pretty sure you're not going to like, but I'm going to really do my best to convince you that it's at least an idea worth thinking about. Elliot Friedman, in his 32 thoughts, had a couple of very interesting tidbits on the league in general, including on the Arizona Coyotes. Um, Kind of a last stand, Friedman called it for Coyotes uh, ownership and trying to find an arena in the era, in the Phoenix area. This is seeming like it might be it, that if they don't get this final deal passed in Tempe, which it kind of sounds like they're not going to, that's it. They're toast. They're probably moving up to Salt Lake. That's how I read it. Batman wants to make, wants everybody to think that, they still could return to Phoenix one day, even if the Coyotes leave. But, man, I don't know how much more proof you need that that hockey does not work in that market. It's a major market. You tried. Let it go. That was one big NHL thing that got described. But a Sabres tidbit and uh, thought number 13 by Elliot Friedman. He writes, quote, Buffalo's got a lot of good prospects, a really talented group, not yet in the NHL over the next few months, it's very possible. Some will be used to get what the Sabres need. There's not room for all of them. And teams always wrestle with when someone outgrows the AHL. I'm very curious to see which young Sabres get a look over the next little while. Also expect Eric Johnson moves. It's a no brainer for a contender bypassing the Johnson news. It's going to be a six round pick. Not interesting at all. I am curious what Friedman knows And how Friedman arrived at that thought. Because the way he words it all, it's kind of tough to tell. Friedman is the most plugged in insider in the NHL. He knows things. He talks to people in the league. He knows what's going on. He's also a smart hockey guy. So one of two things happened for Friedman to arrive at writing this on Thursday morning. One is... He's heard from somebody in the league or somebody with the Sabres that, hey, B 
business is open, baby, for these prospects. They're shopping them around, or they're looking to make a deal like that. They're finally looking to make a two prospects for one player trade, a prospect and a pick trade for a better player. They're looking to do that. And Friedman heard about that, and that's how he arrived at this thought of, hey, here's an idea. It's because it's on the table. He doesn't write about things that are unrealistic. So option one is that he knows something and that that's what it's in the works behind the scenes. That's the one I want to believe. I don't know it to be true. I want to believe that that's the reason why Friedman's writing this this morning. The second reason he could be writing it is Friedman decided to dive in on the Sabres a little bit. You know, 32 thoughts. Let me see what I could write up on Buffalo. What's going on there? It's a ridiculous playoff drought. Fans are mad. What What's going on here? Let me look. And Friedman goes to their organizational depth chart. Month out from the trade deadline. All right, what kind of move could the Sabres make? And he's looking through. He's looking through and going, wait a minute. This team's got a ton of prospects that are knocking on the door about ready to crack the NHL. Yuri Kulik is right there, ready to play in the NHL, if not during this season, next year. Isaac Roseanne is ready to get his chance in the NHL. Matthew Savoy, next year, will be ready to get his chance in the NHL. Noah Osland, who actually might have been the best of the bunch at the World Juniors, is the one where you go, okay, that's probably another year. Everybody else is, hey, here I am. I'm here for the party. You gotta let me in. I'm on time. Just because... You don't have your party set up. This is the Sabres right now are the hosts of the Super Bowl party that you're going to have on Sunday where they tell everybody, hey, come over at 6 o'clock. And then you as the guest, you're Yuri Kulik. You arrive at the party at 6 o'clock on the dot. And Kevin Adams and Don Granato answer the door and they don't have anything ready. They got to go still pick up the pizza. They still got to put out you know, all the drinks, they got to get the ice, they got to do everything still. They're not ready for you, but you're here. I'm here. Let me in, right? I, you Make it work. I'll sit in the living room, but you're letting me in. I'm here. That's the Sabres prospect situation. Friedman maybe looks at that, sees that, and just on his own initiative goes, oh, they're going to have to, what we, by the way, all of us have already done. I've done it. You've done it. We've already arrived at this conclusion ourselves. Friedman maybe is just getting to it later than we are because he's got 31 of the teams to cover of, oh, they're going to make a trade. They they have to. It's inevitable. They all can't make the roster. So, duh, they're going to make a trade like that eventually. And maybe that's why Friedman's writing that this morning. I think that might be more likely. I want to believe option one that he's heard something, but I might think option two is more believable Friedman looked at the Sabres, realized that the long-term situation they're in is that, and then decided to write about it. That's my guess. But we all know they got to make a trade like that, and anybody telling me that it's possible they can make a trade like that, I'm going to take as hope. Even giving me, a, if it's a 40% chance that Friedman knows that the Sabres are looking for that deal behind the scenes, I'll take it. Give me any hope that they're, we're going to get a deal like that before next month's trade deadline. When we come back, a trade that is not like that. I've got an idea for a move that I think you might not like, but hear me out. I'll give you the merits of it, and then you can call me an idiot at the end of it if you still disagree. What about selling high on Uka Pekka Lukanen? Talk about that when we come back here in the Locked On Sabres podcast. We are presented by Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you fire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. Join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And Indeed listeners or listeners of this show will get a $75 job credit to get your jobs more visibility. And Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go 
to Indeed.com slash Lockdown right now. Support our show by saying you heard it about Indeed on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. Indeed.com slash Lockdown. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Today's episode of the Lockdown Sabres podcast is also brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, right now, through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some quick legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA, available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SEIPC, is a a registered broker dealer. Sneaky Joe DiBiase back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. All right, listen, we got a month until the trade deadline. There's not a lot of interesting trade ideas. Hear me out. Let me try to convince you that it's reasonable to think about a trade involving Sabres goaltender Uka Pekka Lukanen. And I already know what you're thinking or what you're saying. Here Joe goes again with the UPL hate. Before the season, he was telling me you should wave him. You should get him out of here. He's not even worth having on the team anymore. That it's time for Devin Levi and Eric Comrie to take over. The guy will never be good. And now he's trying to get him off the team even when he's been playing well. Listen, I signed the apology for him. I was wrong on Lukanen. To an extent, I do also want to defend myself and others, you know, that Matt Bove, for instance, I saw tweeting about this the other day, about being unfair to Uka Pekka Lukanen. I was wrong about Lukanen. I don't feel that I was unfair to Lukanen. The guy hadn't played well. It's what you do. If you haven't played well, and for him, it wasn't like he had played great in juniors and in the minors and then not played well in the NHL because then I could you could say that I was being unfair. But he hadn't shown signs of being an NHL goaltender even at the previous stops in Rochester and um, his limited time with the Sudbury Wolves of the uh, OHL, the Cincinnati Cyclones. Just His development hit a ch- stop right when he got injured, and then for multiple years, it took him a long time to get going until this season. Um, But here we are. All that's in the past. Here we are. He's playing great. How great, though, is he playing? He's been very good. He's been a legitimate number one goaltender this season. That's how good he's been. He's not been the best goalie in hockey. He's not even been one of the best goalies in hockey. Save percentage-wise, he's about average. The better stats that give you more context, goal saved above expected per 60, the one that I'll give you the most, out of 67 goaltenders this year, Lukanen ranks 27th. That's really good. That is really, really good. He has saved four and a half goals over expected on the season. So that's about, you know, three wins, two, three wins that he has contributed above average, which is four to six points. I mean, they'd be a lot lower without him, even, you know, though they're not that close in the first place. So he's been good, very good, number one level good, and he still is a young goaltender. But my guess on what we've got here is a goalie that there are a dozen of in the league, at least, that have a pretty up and down career. This is most goalies, actually. You'll have a year like Lukanen's having right now, and then you'll have a down year. And then you'll have another up year. And then you'll have another down year. And then you have a Vesna year. And then you're back down, and you have another good one. Where This is one of those guys, 
Semyon Varlamov comes to mind, although maybe he's too good for this. But you know what I mean. The guy that had that one crazy year and maybe four good years and then five, eh, not so great. That to me is going to be Uka Pekalukinen, which is fine to have on your roster. I don't need to push him out the door. I want to keep, make that very clear. The only way I would ever think about a Lukanen trade is if you're getting something of real value elsewhere on the roster. So before we get to that, though, the trade part, why I think you could even open this door a little bit about Lukanen being traded. His value is probably never going to be higher. He's 24 years old. You have contract control over the player. And he's playing the best hockey he ever has. This is when his value would be at his best. So, if you believe, still, and I do, that Devin Levi is this team's future number one goaltender, considering the year he's having is completely normal for a 21-year-old netminder, even of his talent and of his expectation. This is normal for what De- for, for Devin Levi. Absolutely normal. So I still think it's very likely he'll turn into their number one goaltender. And if all I need is a nice partner in crime for him to play 35 to 40 games a year, I should be able to find that. That is not a super high profile role on the team. That's a replaceable role that I could even go year to year to year on. If if Levi has locked down the number one job. This is the big question and concern, though, about a Lukanen trade, is you'd be trading him before you really know what Levi is, before you know what you've got. You're probably not going to know what you've got for a couple of years, so any move for Lukanen in the next two or three years would be that. But the idea here is you're cashing in, and what I'm cashing in for Again, the only way I'm thinking about trading Lukanen is if I'm getting a legitimate top four defenseman that the Sabres have been looking for. Lukanen and a pick, Lukanen and a prospect like Noah Osland, and I'm getting a Rasmus Anderson back from Calgary. Or I'm getting, you know, a Brett Pesci back from Carolina. Hurricanes really need goaltending. They would love to have Ukapeka Lukin, and they've been searching all year. They waved on Ranta, called him back up. They were talking about trading Pesci in the offseason. I wonder if Pesci would come to Buffalo, but a guy like that. He's an, a guy you're going to trade Lukin in for and play 20-plus minutes a night. And another reason for that is great that he's playing well this year, but it's 10 points. They're probably done. And let's go Levi and another guy you get in the offseason for cheap cheaper than Brett Pesci, and that's your goalie tandem for next year. You can find your way to replacing Lukanen a lot easier than you can find your way to acquiring a top four defenseman. That's the objective here. And it doesn't have to be a defenseman. It could be the next Timo Meyer that becomes available, a 30-goal scorer. That's another part of this. Now, you tell me how dumb, how crazy this is, because... If you look at the Sabres and who could be available at the deadline, if they want to make a splash move, if they want to shake the foundation a little bit with the roster, there's only so many things they could do. Most of their important players are under contract. We've talked about Casey Middlestat. We'll talk about Casey Middlestat again. He's the more likely idea, I think, to be traded off this roster. But the big reason why is he doesn't have a contract long term. They haven't paid him yet. Same goes with Lukanen. He needs a contract coming up. They haven't paid him yet. And there's going to have to be a decision to made on him, the same that there has to be a decision to be made on Casey Middlestat. So, given that that's a big element of this whole idea, let's talk about Lukanen's contract situation when we come back. Because this is a tough one. And we'll try to break it down back here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast. We are presented by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry about where you buy tickets to your next big sporting event or when you're buying tickets to your next big sporting event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, plus music, comedy, theater events near you. Killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying 
ticket. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices. Show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Game time is tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts. It is truly the best place to find last-minute tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Final segment here in the Locked On Sabres podcast. I know, I know, we're talking an Uka Pekka Lukanen trade on today's show. I don't think it's all that likely or realistic, but there's some merit to me for it. Some merit. Because I'm trying to find a way for this team to go make a big move to make the roster better, specifically on the blue line in the top four. One way you could do that is this guy, Uka Pekka Lukanen. Now, a part of the reason why I landed on him as an idea to talk about is his contract is up. And what's going to happen there? I don't know that I'm leaning one way or the other on what the smart move is. I think Lukanen's having a career year. I mean, statistically, that is just true. I would probably expect or guess, again, given that this is most goalies in the NHL, that we'll see a little bit of regression next year. They really could be wasting one of the good Lukanen years. I don't know how many you'll get. This is one of them, and they're wasting it. But what are you going to pay him after a season like this? I think the only thing the Sabres should even consider is a bridge contract with Lukanen. That's it. Signing him to a long-term six, seven-year deal should be out of the question. He's been great this year. He's been very nice. I think he's really cleaned up his rebound control. He's cleaned up how he used to be a guy that would really overextend himself, that would overplay certain situations, um, would chase pucks out of his own crease when he's trying to challenge. And this year, I think he's been more calculated. I think he's been more conservative in his approach, utilizing his size and his athleticism while knowing I don't have to make, you know, I think guys that are six, five and can move like that. Sometimes maybe think that they have to make the, the spectacular save all the time. And I do think that you could tell the foundation that Lucan has built his game on the mechanics, the technique has certainly improved. So bridge contract, a couple of years, two, three years, you give them, the money's going to be weird here, right? I don't know. We haven't the Sabers haven't done a contract like this with a goalie since since who? Did they Robin Leonard? It's been a long time. They didn't even pay Robin Leonard, right? They let him walk. So three year deal, three point five million dollars. That's the best I could do. That's the my best guess. Three point five million dollars over three years, and then he would be a unrestricted free agent at age twenty seven when that deal would be up and would be over. So you tell me, what's the better idea? Giving Lucan in that contract and you keep going and him and Devin Levi are your tandem for the future. And I think that's probably going to be the more popular answer. Or do you take Lucan in? Do you pair him with a stud prospect? And do you go get the best player on the market that is on a team that needs a goalie? Because, of course, Lucan in would only be, you know, wanted by teams that, like Carolina that need a goaltender. I think you could go either way. Um, I think it's worthy of a debate. Um, even though I'm making the case here, if you pinned me down, I would slightly side with, no, you know what? I, I'm right on the fence. I, if you tell me I'm getting that top four defenseman, I want that top four defenseman. I'm not trading Lucan in though, just to trade him. Of course. Like I'm not doing that. I, I'm what I'm doing here is I'm only even thinking about it because this is when you maximize an asset and Lucan in is an asset on this team right now. He had no value at the beginning of the year. And now he's got value, or at least he should have value. And to me, I'm confident still Devin Levi is the number one of the future. That's where I guess you really have to think of where you are uh, in this question is what do you truly believe Devin Levi is? Because if you think like me, they can sustain Levi and a different veteran that they bring in for cheaper the next year's version of Cam Talbot, who's been great for the Kings this year on a one-year deal. If that's good enough for you, like it is for me, 
and you could get an impact player in another position, you look to trade Lukanen. If you're not as sure about Devin Levi as the number one, if you don't want to take the risk at all, you don't want to trade anybody until you are sure that there is a legit goaltender of the future on this team, or if you believe that that's Lukanen, um, then you just don't make a move. Then you just you go forward, and these are your two goalies. Let me know what you think. Uh, join our subtext. Join subtext.com slash Locked On Sabres, our Locked On Sabres text line, where you can answer there. You can get us on Twitter at Locked On Sabres as well. Uh, we will talk Sabres and Blues on tomorrow's show. Uh, a little bit about the Blues, where they're at. I want to revisit the Nate Thompson trade a little bit. We do this on a yearly occasion. Every year that t- trade looks different. Every year. It was a blowout in favor of St. Louis at the start. Then it was more of just a win for St. Louis. Then it was kind of close to even siding with St. Louis because they won the cup because of where Tage was. And this year, you got Tage down. You got Ryan Johnson up. O'Reilly's not on the Blues anymore. We'll talk about the the we'll revisit the Blues Sabres trade. And I got to talk about Rasmus Ristolainen potentially going to the Toronto Maple Leafs because that is a fun idea, uh, I think. Not necessarily a good thing for Toronto, but I think that's a fun idea uh, for the playoffs. Thanks for listening here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Make it us a part of your first listen every day. Reminder, check out Locked On Sports today, the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube that you can now find on Amazon Fire TV. Amazon uh, Fire TV, Locked On Sports today. Check it out. Talk to you next time here on the Locked On Sabres podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.